everybody. Happy Monday and welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is the weekly show where we bring you the latest news from the world of television. Let's talk about the week that was in TV. Joining us this afternoon is David Griffin. Hello, Collider TV Talk fans. It is a David Griffin 30 minutes along with Sinead DeFries. We're doing 30 minutes of pole dark and then 30 minutes uh, of Pretty yeah, Little right. Liars. No, I'm just joking. I'm not going to do that to you. Uh, Josh McCoug is out of town. So is Emma Fife. So we brought along a very special guest. Sinead, who's here? Also joining us today is Ben Bateman. What's up, everybody? I'm here. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to be in the seat. I've never talked about TV Talk on TV Talk with you guys. And Ben, this is not your first time on the stage here. You've been here before, right? You do some oh, things in the Schmodown world? I've done the Schmodown, and, uh, you know, I don't have on my sunglasses. I don't have my rude comments today, so, you know, I'm on hold from the from the Schmodown thing. I'm not even going to call it a character. It's just a thing. Well, we appreciate and, you joining us. Thanks for coming on. Okay, thank, thank you. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. We are going to get right into We have a pretty packed show today, folks. I don't even know what camera I'm supposed to be looking at. Hey, and really yes, quick. My Little before Pony. We, I was going to say, before we get into the show, yes. we have to talk about... Your My Little Pony shirt. Yes. That is the dopest shirt I've ever seen you wear in I my mean, entire life. You have to be confident, right? I mean, I knew I knew Ben was going to come on. Ben yeah. always looks sharp. Thank you. Always dressed to the nines. So this is about as good as I could do. I had to yeah, bring I mean, out I My Little I Pony. Yeah. I wish I got the memo because I'm wearing a cropped Chicago shirt. <laughs> also a good look. I didn't wear my My Little Pony pocket square, mm -hmm. and I'm just I'm glad I didn't because you've got the shirt. We, you know. We would have matched. See, I, I, already we're, we're, we're going off on tangents here. I mean, this is Collider TV. We talk so we do. Even without Makuga, we're still going <laughs> off on tangents. I'm so sad the wild man's not here. I know. No, Makuga. Yeah, no Makuga. Uh, but we're going to get right into it. Sinead, what's our first story? All right, so there may be some light at the end of the dark tunnel that's been the gossip surrounding the production of Star Trek Discovery. Collider.com's very own Steve Wine sat down with producer Alex Kurtzman in a recent interview where he clarifies why there have been delays. So he said, we postponed our schedule because the truth is we did not want to put out something that was subpar. And as the vision expanded, we started feeling like we weren't going to be able to deliver the scope and the scale that was on the page. And CBS was extremely supportive in saying, okay, you know what? This is streaming. It's not like we have to beat out right away. Let's do the best version of this. Trek is too important for all of us. David, does Kurtzman's reassurance give you hope or are you still in doubt? I have some hope from these comments. You know, making television, making any type of uh, media, you know, film, we all know, is complex. It takes time. There's behind the scenes shenanigans that happen. You know, I mean, we hear it in films with reshoots, and it happens in television too. And I like Kurtzman's thoughts, you know, on this interview. And he even goes even deeper and talks about how, you know, the studio is giving him more time because they want to put out the best Star Trek that they can now. Um, you know, Ben, we have you here today. I don't know if you're uh, what Star Trek you're more familiar with, like with, with the old uh, kind of style there, you know, like with Captain Kirk and Picard and, you know, Star Trek Enterprise, or if you're more familiar with the new J.J. Abrams version, the show from the trailer looks like it's going to be going down the J.J. Abrams route in terms of the way it's shot and its aesthetic and all that. But these comments, I don't know, I feel like Kurtzman and his gang are really taking this serious and they want this show to succeed. It's a difficult task. Yep. Star Trek is iconic. It's like, I mean, all right. I know it's not you know, Star Wars. It's different, yeah, different, but it's iconic. It's it's defined a generation. Do you think? I mean, when you hear these comments, are you do you have hope that the show could be good? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, it's I'm on both sides of this because on the one hand, Kurtzman, I have a tremendous amount of faith in him as a creator. And on the other hand, mm -hmm. the Mummy. Let's be honest, guys. That's not a great no. look for him right mm -hmm. now at this moment. And uh, I do love the cast. You know, Jason Isaacs. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Tavington from The Patriot. Uh, he's yeah. one of my all-time favorite <laughs> villains. So just seeing him in this role is great. It's in very. I mean. You know, forgive me for saying it, but like to me, Star Trek is a little bit like sci-fi soap opera. Like mm -hmm. that's, you know what I mean? It's like a, it's it's that's the biggest difference from Star Wars. We've never had a Star Wars television show that's run for as long as any of the Star Trek shows. Not right. even close. Right. That many generations and iterations. Mm -hmm. I really like the cast and the creative behind this version of Star Trek. It's probably the first Star Trek as a grown person that I would watch. I didn't really watch a lot of Star Trek growing mm -hmm. up. I, you know, I remember on Q13 Fox, The Simpsons, they'd advertise it. Like, yeah. But uh, nowadays, definitely, I would watch this. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the cast, and I did watch The Walking Dead, mm -hmm. so Sasha seeing her on there. It's exciting. And I'm curious to uh, ask you, Ben, because we've talked about this a lot on TV Talk before. I'm sure you know, a lot of the fans out there have heard this. I've had a little bit of an issue with the whole CBS All Access thing because you do have to pay an additional fee. I think the pilot is going to air on CBS proper. So, like for me, I have DirecTV. So, I pay a cable bill every month or a satellite bill every month, and I get to watch CBS. But if you want to watch Star Trek, more episodes, you have to pay, I think it's an additional $6.99 mm. on top of that to watch Star Trek. Do you, I mean, is that worth it to you? I mean, not, not that if you're a Star Trek fan or not, but just let's say it was a show you're really hyped about on CBS coming yeah. out. Yeah. 
would you be willing to dish out an extra seven bucks a month, even if you're already paying a cable bill and you already had CBS on your TV? Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's funny with the subscription type service stuff. Mm -hmm. There's so much of it now. Yeah. There's so many different providers you have to pay extra cash for. And I've actually found I just try to not think about it. I try to just and I realize that could that could rack up. But, you know, for instance, I paid I was paying for both Spotify and iTunes mm -hmm. or, or an Apple Music because Let's be honest, guys. If you want to hear Taylor Swift, it's worth the money. Okay? I mean, actually, now she's back on Spotify. It's a bad example. It's a bad example. But like, point is, yeah. I don't really care if it's ten bucks, seven bucks, twelve bucks a month. If I was paying for twenty of them, because at mm. the end of the day, I'm somebody who loves the content that I love, and if it means I get it, absolutely. I'm not going to pay ninety nine dollars a month to watch my favorite show. That's a travesty. Mm -hmm. But I'll happily pay seven, eight bucks. No that's, that's a good answer, Shane. How about you? Like, if there was a show, I mean, you know, I'm not the biggest Star Trek fan, but a show that you were passionate about, let's say. What's your favorite show? One of your favorite shows on television right now? Uh, right now? Mm -hmm. I know you're a Pretty Little Liars fan. Right. So, I mean, like, we got, like, three episodes left to Pretty Little Liars. Leftovers. So. Uh, let's talk about the leftovers. Okay. Let's say the leftovers. Okay. When you have HBO, mm -hmm. HBO is already a part of your subscription service, and you get HBO Go automatically. Right. That's, that's a given. Let's say HBO changed their policy and said, okay, we're only going to have leftovers on this other series. We have HBO now. So even if you subscribe to HBO, HBO goes gone. You have to pay an additional, you know, $7, $8 mm -hmm. a month. Would that be worth it to you to watch the leftovers? Yeah, I mean, like, I feel as long as, I mean, I still live with my parents, and mm -hmm. they have always had every single type of cable possible because we have such a wide scope of interest in our family. And I was just on the FX Now app yesterday, <clears throat> and I make sure to download everything. So... I will spend the extra money to have it on my tablets and things like that on the go. Like mm -hmm. I just said, I'm out of storage because I just downloaded Netflix <laughs> again on my phone. Um, because I, if I'm really invested in a show, I will pay for it. I still have Pandora, which is like ridiculous. I pay for Pandora. So like Ben, <laughs> you, you, I spend the money too just to make sure that I always have the one mm -hmm. thing. I have Pandora because it is the best for music for my son versus having Spotify, which is best for music for me. So like, I will download and spend the extra money to have an app on double tablets if there's one show I'm watching. And then I'll delete it, and then I'll go back to it. So yeah, absolutely, I would spend money on it. I mean, if you think about like a cup of coffee, for instance, like I'm somebody who likes, you know, like single origin, pour over coffee. It's very popular now. Or like nitro cold brew, any of these fancy coffees. Nitro cold brew. Yeah, that's the best. It's delicious, right? But it's like, you know, most it's $5 mm -hmm. or 6 bucks, and Whoa. you tip them a dollar, and yeah. it's... If I don't do that three times in a month, it pays for three of these subscriptions. Yeah, totally. It's, it's just true. like you think about that and you're like, if I get the cheaper version of my lunch today, I can afford a subscription this month. That's yeah. why to me, we spend such ridiculous amounts of money on so many stupid things in our lives. Mm -hmm. Content is everything in our business. Mm -hmm. You have to have it. You have to know what's going on and have it readily available. So it's right. always worth it. And nowadays, most people don't even do cable. You know, I was just over um, at a friend's house and they don't even have cable at all. They just do their um, their Apple TV. So they already are saving tons of money there. And like we have a fire stick at my house and sometimes I could go through an entire weekend and never turn on my cable. So if you're one of those people that have like a Roku or an Apple or something like that, that's actually way less expensive. So spending the extra cash to watch a show, I feel like most people would agree with us and do that too. Okay, yeah, I mean, it seems like if it's worth it to you, you're going to spend the money. But of course, we'd love to hear what you think. Let us know what you think. I mean, not just for CBS All Access, but for any all access premium, you know, network. Are you going to spend extra money to, to uh, watch your favorite show? That's a good point. All right, we're going to go down to, I'm really excited about this. That's what I'm excited about. So I hope you follow me on Twitter. I've been talking the last couple of days about this big summer TV preview that I wanted to do here because I get so many tweets now about, well, hey, what are you guys going to watch now that the shows are over? Like after fall, there's nothing left to watch and there's so much television mm -hmm. to watch. So I got Ben here with me, myself, of course, and Sinead, and we each have three picks Three shows that we think you should all check out that are coming out, some like next week, uh, some in a few months, but all from basically now until August. We're going to get right to it with our 2017 summer TV preview. And I want to start with Ben. Uh, for your, for, what's your uh, first pick? My first pick is going to be Preacher. And uh, yeah. okay, so I mentioned actually before we went live that Scott Pilgrim was a comic book growing up that was my favorite. Mm -hmm. As a kid, all I was into was comic books. I have 6,000 comics in my mom's basement back in Seattle. And Preacher was legitimately my favorite comic at the time I read it. It was the best thing I had ever read. So when these guys actually did the show, I was so pumped up. And season one, all things considered, 
was pretty solid. Mm-hmm. What they did, though, is they took the story and they created a backstory before the actual comic book story starts. That's what season one was. Because right, the main story is more of a road trip, which looks like we're getting a road trip in season two. Yes, they, they definitely dangled little bits and pieces of the story we wanted to see, but they created characters that didn't exist, and they gave us like a background on a story that's all basically included in one issue, the first issue of Preacher, and that's what the story was. Mm-hmm. I liked the first season overall. I think the show was incredibly well cast, but season two... Just from the trailer, it looks like they're doing it right. They're doing everything that I wanted in the first place, so I can't freaking wait. I, uh, I'm going to be covering on AfterBuzz TV the after show for that as well every single mm-hmm. Sunday, so I can't wait for Preach. What's crazy thing too is that Ruth Nega is now coming off of an Oscar win, for, yeah, or a nomination. For nomination, love. sorry, Oscar nomination. So like for now, love it, yeah. so now she can have like Oscar nominated mm-hmm. actress Ruth yeah. Nega, no matter what she does now. That's, She's that's pretty killing good. it. She is. She is killing it. So today we're going to bounce. I'm going to just kind of bounce here. Uh, how about you give one of your picks? All right, cool. So I'll go with the one that <clears throat> I don't I know the least about, but that's Snowfall. Um, so obviously FX is, to me, one of the greatest networks right now, kind of leading the pack. And um, we were all obsessed with Legion, right? So I have a lot of hope that Snowfall is at the right, it has the right home. But basically it's the first first epidemic of crack cocaine in LA. Um, and I've always been very interested in the history of Los Angeles just because there's a lot of weird shit that went down mm. over the over the past what 50 60 years but especially around the 80s and 90s right. um, and so this is the first the first epidemic the first time it really became super mainstream and popular and i love that it seems like the show takes place or it sets it up with a bunch of different characters. There's like a daughter of um, like a Mexican crime boss and then there's a CIA operative and there's a couple of different characters but the way the way that I've read about it and I, the way that I've seen it marketed is that you know that these people are somehow going to start <clears throat> intersecting, their lives mm-hmm. are going to start coming together and I love shows like that. Like It makes me think of like the pilot of This Is Us, right? Where you have like one big story and so many different people to follow, but it just keeps me so intrigued because it just is already such an awesome plot and I love I love character heavy storylines. So looks, that's my pick. Ben, I know you were interested in Snowfall as well. It looks Absolutely. like from the trailer, FX is such a fantastic marketing job, especially if you're watching this on cable and you're watching FX, maybe you're watching Fargo right now. The teasers are excellent. Oh, like, yeah. These little They're like 20 so to 30 second teasers, you're like, what is this show? And mm-hmm. they just give you more and more week after yeah. week. What I love about the show too, it's like it's kind of uh, addressing all these different ethnic groups too. So you're going to have like the, you know, these African-American kids growing up in the South Central, you got the Hispanic side of things, and then, you know, the white side of things. It was kind yeah. of interesting to see all those aspects of the drug trade. So, I mean, Ben, you're going to be watching this too? 100%. I mean, FX is doing a great job in a lot of different avenues. They're willing to spend money, which is, I think, one of the most important things for one of these premium cable networks. They're at the point right now that I seem to remember Netflix or uh, AMC was at when they had their first stumble, which was, uh, which was what was that? Low Winter Sun, is that what that show is Oh, yeah, Low Winter Sun. Right yeah. after mm-hmm. Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, FX is at that point right now where the brand name is so elevated mm-hmm. um, that I think everybody just expects Snowfall to be good. That's kind of the way that I feel. Yeah, yeah. Talking about it. absolutely. Uh, so it'll be very interesting to see. The names involved in Snowfall that I'm the most interested in are the fact that John Singleton's yeah. producing yeah. this. Um, Singleton well, he created the entire thing, I think, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and we've seen, obviously, the good side of Singleton, you know, Boys in the Hood. We've seen the bad side, Baby Boy and Four Brothers. So I'm hoping that John Singleton knocks out of the park with this one. It's a story that I'm very interested in. It why are hating on Four Brothers, dude? I mean, it's an okay yeah, That movie. was the one with Tyrese. <laughs> I like I that. Mind, I don't mind Four Brothers. I don't remember <laughs> much about it. To be fair, I don't remember much about it, but I, I kind mean, of enjoyed I, that I one. I haven't seen it like a dozen times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I'm going to pick my... I'll do a pick for me. Uh, I'm going to pick The Mist. Uh, yeah. It's coming on on Spike, or now it's, what, the, the Paramount Network now or something like that. Yeah. Um, looks really interesting. It's based on Stephen King's short story. There was already a, a film that came out a while back, which was really good. Yeah. I thought it worked perfect in, like... 90 minutes to like, you know, uh, two hour setting, you know, it builds the mystery of what the mist is and just kind of concludes. And it's a crazy ending. If you haven't seen it, go out and watch the mist. But as a TV series over several hours, it should be interesting to see how they're going to pull that off. But it looks good. So is the enemy the mist or is the enemy like what's in the we'll mist? See in the, I don't want to spoil anything, but in the movie, you don't really get answers necessarily, yeah. which is the cool thing about it. That's okay. what I'm. I'm wondering if it's going to be as good, as magical, and scary, and terrifying as the first one. Where, like, you didn't know why this miss came. It came, and, you know, there. But, like, with this, it's, like, over several 
weeks, are we going to get more explanation about it? I mean, does this look interesting to you, Ben? 100%. There's, there's a lot of different things about this show that I think look great. First of all, the trailer references the movie very specifically. Mm. It, like, the trailer has imagery that looks like it comes straight out of that film. Um, that movie is a weird one, though, because it's Frank Darabont. And most yeah, people don't yeah. realize the fact right. that Frank Darabont's directed four feature films, one mm -hmm. of which is The Shawshank Redemption, one of which is The Green Mile, one of which is this movie, mm -hmm. and he did The Majestic. So this is a guy, a very storied director, somebody who has a First huge, season of The Walking Dead, yeah. which is still my favorite. I got a good story for you. <laughs> I, I got to yeah. tell the story. Mm -hmm. So I was working at Meltdown Comics when I was 17 mm -hmm. years old. I lived in L.A., and uh, Frank Darabont comes in. This is like 2005 and he's buying two volumes of The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. My hair's like this long, and I'm a big comic book nerd. And he's <laughs> like, I'm standing there ringing him up, and I was like, oh, you've got, this is a great book. He goes, yeah, yeah, I, I know, it's a good book. I go, you should stay. We've got an event tonight. He's like, you know, I've got a thing tomorrow. I gotta go pitch this, this TV series based on this book. I'm buying these to give to the producers. And I didn't know who he was, and I was like, oh, that sounds so cool. I would love to see this as a TV mm -hmm. show. And I was like, you should stay for this art show we have in the back. And he looks at me, and he's like, I'm sorry, man, I gotta go. I gotta buy a pretty girl a pizza. And I was like, all right, cool. And then he walks out, and my boss God, was like, you know who that was? Cool. And I was like, no. And he's like, Daravon. I was like, wow. And then like two years later, it's on TV, and he sold the show. So That's awesome. That I need to start awesome. taking my dating advice from Frank Darabont. I'm going to go yeah. find a pretty girl. I'm going to go her buy her pizza. pizza. Dude, I could have told you that. It's got to work. It's got to work. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Ben, we're going to go back to you. What is your second pick? Second pick is going to be uh, Blood Drive. And uh, this one, this one, Blood Drive is on sci-fi. Sci yeah. uh, this Sippy. is starring Christina Ochoa, <laughs> a rising star, a name mm. that everybody is going to know by next year. Because not only did she book, okay, so she's in Animal Kingdom season one, a fairly small role. Mm -hmm. She booked the lead in Valor, which is the brand new CW show premiering this fall, and the lead in Blood Drive in the course of a year. So you're going to see this. That's a good year. She's mm -hmm. going to be everywhere. She's the coolest. She's in a literal genius. She's part of all these, like, she's like Mensa. She's an actual genius. Part of, like, every <laughs> one of these different uh, clubs and things like that. Mm -hmm. She's, like, super into science. And uh, this is, like, a pulpy, very, like, Robert Rodriguez style. Mm -hmm. uh, it, li literally, like, the cars are driven by blood. That's what the story is. How could you not <laughs> want to watch this? Christina is like a total badass. She's tall. She's striking. Smoking hot. I think this show is going to be unbelievable. I'm really excited to watch this. It looks really cool. I mean, they're actually feeding people into the cars. Like, the engines have, yeah. like, teeth, you know, because the, the girl's like, have you seen the price of gas these days? You know, I mean, it looks cheesy, but it looks cool. I mean, I want to check this Super out. Super Grindhouse. Super Grindhouse, yeah. yeah. I mean, and I think every episode is going to explore a different aspect of <laughs> Grindhouse. It's going to have, like, cannibalism and yep. all these different aspects. So I'm definitely going to check that out. Watch that. It's going to be on Sci-Fi. Sinead, number two for you. All right, so I'm going to go with uh, the my reluctant pick, but I'm still such a sucker, so I'm going to go with Defenders. Marvel's okay. the Defenders. Um, on <laughs> Not pumped for the Defenders? Okay, well, <laughs> let, me, let me break it down for you. <laughs> last year, right, yep. we started the show when? May of 2016? Yeah, it's been a while, yeah. Yeah, so last year, Defenders was all we could talk about all summer because we had found out it was happening mm -hmm. and we were super stoked on it and we talked about Iron Fist and Luke Cage and then Luke Cage happened and it was okay and then two weeks after I got done watching Luke Cage I was like, nah, it wasn't that good and then Iron mm -hmm. Fist happened and that really wasn't that good and now I'm picking this because I want Defenders to restore my faith in the Marvel Netflix universe so bad. And also because I just really need to see Daredevil again because I feel like once we see him again, it's really going to help a lot. Um, but I, I still am excited. I still want to see these guys all together. And I still, like, I love what the Netflix, the Marvel Netflix universe started out as. Like, mm -hmm. I really, really enjoyed Daredevil. And none of it was ever, fan I never found it ever fantastic. I wasn't like, this is incredible. Um, but there were some really, really great moments. Um, with Daredevil, we know we're getting Punisher, which is the one I'm actually the most excited for. Luke Cage has actually started shooting. They're it started yeah. production. For yeah, and like now, Luke yeah. Cage had its, had its mm -hmm. low moments, but the one with... Um, with Diamond, with before, you know, Diamondback. Yeah, Marshall Ali was yeah, incredible. He yeah. was incredible. So there were some really strong points throughout the shows that I'm like, okay, like I'm still excited. Mm -hmm. But mostly because I kind of want to see this come full circle. Like now that we've gotten to know them all individually, I feel like the next step is to put them all together. And that was always what we were heading towards. So yes, I'm still excited about it. That's at the end of the summer um, yep. in August. So I hope that people still watch it, even though Iron Fist 
and Luke Cage um, really didn't measure up to everyone's expectations. But I really do hope that people still give it a chance. I feel like Luke Cage is the sw is the swing point on that whole conversation because some people really like that show. Mm -hmm. I liked it up until episode what nine, ten, and then yeah. the last the last four were just garbage to me. But I I really really enjoyed Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Obviously, it was yeah, and Iron Fist. I mean, I watched all of it. Like it's something kept me watching it. I just I really didn't enjoy it. I think this is gonna do well. Yeah. I think Thanks. one I hope because so. these are the showrunners from Daredevil season two. Yep, uh, which I'm excited to see. We have Sigourney Weaver. Uh -huh. as the awesome. villain yep. who looks great in the trailer and it's just everybody together because we do every show even Iron Fist which I was you know not positive on there's aspects of the show mm -hmm. I really enjoyed yeah. so I'm excited to see all those characters together and it looks like from the trailer what I took from it I love Jessica Jones in the trailer yep. that might have been my least favorite show uh, of the ones that have been out but I liked her in this trailer I want to see more of her in the Defenders yeah. are you excited for Defenders? I am excited for Defenders for exactly the reasons you just said I, I, Daredevil to me and especially the Punisher storyline in Daredevil just the second season stands as the crown jewel of the entire Netflix Defenders yeah. sort of and that's what I want to see. I want to see more yeah. of that. And also, I don't know, I, I do think that there's a little bit of a problem with things like this with market saturation where mm -hmm. there's a lot of it now. Yeah. Just like any of these things, there's so much of it. But I do think that there's a unique take on this one. And the Defenders storyline, look, it's not like it's not like every Daredevil comic was a good comic. They just happen to focus yeah. on a good storyline. Same with Defenders. The Defenders comics aren't all good. A lot yeah. of them are terrible. Right. But if they focus on the right ones with the right people, they'll mm -hmm. make a good story. Mm -hmm. And I think this will be And good. our biggest mm -hmm. issue, well, my biggest issue, too, and I know that a lot of people agree, is that um, the seasons are too long. They're just too long. We've talked about this so many times before that we never need as many episodes um, as 13, but we always get 13. Mm -hmm. So maybe, just maybe, um, it'll make more sense this time around because there's more story to tell. Yeah, right? we're only getting eight episodes. We're only getting only eight, eight episodes, episodes and maybe yeah. these eight episodes are going to be super strong mm -hmm. because there's it's just naturally there's more to tell because there's they're all together, you know? So we'll see. I just Fingers want, crossed. Mm -hmm. I just want more Vanessa. That's all I miss. Just <laughs> yeah. the, the D'Onofrio. Just the more. Yeah, yeah he's good. We need more D'Onofrio. But yeah. I want to talk about Glow on okay. Netflix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, female wrestling, uh, professional uh, women's wrestling in the 1980s. Looks really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't Love know much outfits. about, I mean, I know this is kind of based off a true story. I don't really know much about the history, but I think that's why I'm so interested in it because I don't really know much about women's wrestling outside of, you know, when I used to watch WWE when I was a kid. Yeah. You know, back like Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock and those guys, Triple H. But outside of that, I don't know where it started. You know, I know more about the guys and I do the ladies. So I'm fascinated. And Allison Bree. When I first saw her on Mad Men, you know, yeah. as Pete Campbell's wife, I was just enthralled with her. I think she's gorgeous. She's funny. I love everything she does. So I'm excited to see Alison Brie in this. I mean, you're excited about this, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. What does it stand for again? Is it it's gorgeous? Is it gorgeous ladies of wrestling? Something like that. It's glamorous. Glamorous, glamorous yeah. ladies yeah. of yeah. wrestling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm stoked. I was just having this long conversation with my mom this morning about how I 100% believe I was born in the wrong decade. Um, I always <laughs> talk about it. And you think we, you'd be a wrestler? Yeah, like a post. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know if I could ever be a wrestler. Like I'm a, I'm a very small human being, so I don't know if mm -hmm. I would ever survive in the ring. But um, I posted like this picture on Instagram and how I did like this '80s makeover, mm -hmm. and I was like, man, I just, I, I wish so bad I could have lived in that decade, not be born in that decade, be born mm -hmm. in the 70s and be like a teenager and in my early 20s in the in the 80s because it just looks like people back then had so much fun and based on this trailer alone, I, it was so authentic to me and what I picture the 80s to be like and I just, I loved everything about this trailer and I'm super stoked on it. All right, we're gonna go to the last, we're gonna kind of move here a little bit. There's a lot of stuff to talk about today. I know, it's a lot, a lot of stuff to TV. talk about. Yeah, and I know I'm a cougar, always struggles getting through everything. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go to our last shows. Uh, ben, how about you? What's your last pick? Uh, it's the OG, it's Game of Thrones. I mean, there's not yeah. really that much I have to say about this because probably every single person watching this show is just like, shut up, man. Why are you mentioning Game of Thrones? But like, <laughs> but I mean, like, let's just be honest, guys. When, it's, it's, when you think about like Michael Jordan being the best basketball player in the game for a certain number of years that he was in the NBA, mm -hmm. and those years where it was just like, there's nobody that could touch him, that's like Game of Thrones right now. It's yeah. like, when it's on TV, that's all, I mean, CNN will post when the new trailer drops. That's the kind of news that show is. So for me, it's just, how can you not be super <laughs> amped about it? Is Cersei gonna die? Like, are we gonna get to see a Danny and Jon Snow team up? I just can't, I can't wait. There's very few event television series. I mean, there's, there's sports. There's some, you know, reality TV that people watch, but there's very few shows where people that watch live anymore. And Game of Thrones is one of those shows that if you don't watch live, people actually, for once, out of the whole week, stay off social media because they're so terrified they're mm -hmm. going to get spoiled by something. 100%. I think Game of Thrones is the last show standing that has that. I mean, Walking Dead has its followers, a big following, mm -hmm. but it's not as crazy as Game of Thrones. Doesn't not even the close. Scope, yeah. not, 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 not even close. Nothing is as crazy as Game of Thrones. This is the first time I think we've ever mm -hmm. seen a show take over pop culture um, in, in the way that it has, like, ever. 
Yeah, and people, I mean, just, I, I can't wait. July 16th, Game of Thrones is coming back. Make sure you watch it. Sinead, what's your final pick? Uh, my final pick is The Fosters. So I talked about this. This is my pick of the week <laughs> a couple weeks ago. So this is on Freeform. Um, the season just ended. This is a beautiful show about a, a, a lesbian couple who foster a bunch of kids, and they're, they're adopting them, and it's kind of like how this family comes together. But the new season's coming out. It, the last season ended on a major cliffhanger. There's literally nothing I could say to give it away, but I actually was really surprised at how many TV talk people watch The mm -hmm. Fosters. That's because it's actually really, really good, and people have their their preconceived judgments about Freeform because it's got shows like Pretty Little Liars. So you automatically assume that it's a very girly TV show, but it's not. It's great. And if you have a family, like, just watch it. It's so good. You won't be disappointed. So my final pick, I had to do at least one British show in there. I had to throw one in there. It is Broadchurch. I know people, you know, in the UK can be like, we already watched it. I know. But, it, you know, the shows are, it's slow to come to the States. you got to wait a few months. So BBC America uh, is bringing Broadchurch uh, right here to the U.S. And I haven't seen the new season yet, so I'm thrilled. This is going to be season three. I mean, just such a fantastic cast. I mean, you know, you have uh, Olivia Coleman and um, uh, I always forget his name from um, uh, Doctor Who and Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. I'm blanking on his name. David Tennant, thank you, David Tennant, sorry, uh, David Tennant, just a, a great actor. They tried to do an American version of it called Grace Point, hmm. and they brought David Tennant to the States, and they gave him Anna Gunn from Breaking Bad, and it was just bad. It hmm. was bad. They tried to capture that, you know, that, just that great British flavor, quirkiness that I love about those shows, the beautiful way it's shot. It didn't work as Grace Point in America, but it works fantastic as uh, Broadchurch in the UK. So I'm going to watch that show. I'm excited to watch that on BBC America. If you've never seen an episode, you can catch up. I believe it's on Amazon Prime. It's on Netflix. You can hmm. stream it. It's a great cop show, but uh, like eight to ten episodes per season. Not hard to get through, so definitely check out Broadchurch. That is our summer preview for 2017. As we said, there are plenty of shows to watch. Now... We have to get you a new review. Uh, this is going to be a review we did for the TNT series Claws, uh, which premiered actually uh, just uh, just yesterday on uh, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, shows about some crazy ladies uh, in, in Tampa, Florida, running a nail salon. It is intense. It's colorful. It's fun. Here's our review. Check it out. Try to flush a meatball stuff down the toilet. Where are they? You can't. Yeah, you want your an appointment? This is fine. This is my medicine. I don't think you get how bad I'm hurt. If you don't have an appointment, you gotta go. But you know what? Is it loose in here? Get the hell out. Now. TV Talk fans, Emma and I aren't on the show this week, and we really apologize. So we pre-taped a little pilot review, especially for you guys, of Claws on TNT. Uh, it's a show about nails and the the pills and sweet-ass people in Tampa, Florida doing awesome stuff with their claws. It's a double entendre. See what it is? It's not like Santa Claus. You know, you, you get it. Yeah. C-L-A-W-S. Uh, I actually, here's the thing. This is a this is a very real storyline I think for a show uh, with the selling of prescription meds and like these shady clinics and if you're gonna do this you do it in Florida I mean this is this is the <laughs> yeah. state that yeah. you do it in I actually had a friend who didn't realize because she grew up in Florida and she okay. didn't realize that the show Cops was not local programming <laughs> because. Wow. Uh, a lot it is always of the cops. cases on cops take place in Florida. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. so true. Yeah. You know what I really like, think is cool about the show is that I, all right, 
being a dude, I know about the barbershop. Well, not in a few years, but <laughs> I used to know about the barbershop. You know about yeah, the beard the, barbershop. Yeah, the beard. Yeah, that's right. In LA, there's a lot of beard barbershops. And you, there's conversations, guys talking, you talk about politics yeah. and relationships, all this kind of stuff. But I don't really know what the nail salon lifestyle is like. So oh, I, I actually enjoyed getting kind of an inside view of, well, of one version of what one nail salon is like in Florida. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I liked the the whole thing with um, the girl in the beginning where they were talking about like the pizza wrestling or whatever, where she mm -hmm. was complaining about the guy. I mean, because that to me, like that is very much something that does go on at nail salons. It is sort of this like weird, and I, I think it happens at hair salons mm -hmm. too, where it's, it's mm -hmm. like this weird little like, bubble of therapy in a weird in a you way. ran a salon for a while didn't you Sinead? um well i didn't run it but oh, okay. <laughs> i worked at one yeah okay. for yeah. a while um but yeah there's there's something very interesting about salons um especially nail salons hair salons it's a good it's a good it's all cash mm. yeah and it's, it's an all cash yeah, business. <laughs> totally um but the crazy thing about salons is for some reason when you walk through the door of a salon you no longer have any filter. Like you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> walk in as if you were walking in to see your therapist. And it's crazy because that like that scene in Legally Blonde where she first yes. walks in and she talks to Paulette, right? Yeah. yeah. And she talks to her. That is so right in so many ways. So the thing that's so cool about Claws is that this nail salon totally embodies what nail salons really are like. Uh -huh. But at the same time, like these bitches are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, have, okay. they have good chemistry. They do have good, good chemistry. Yeah, and I, all have good chemistry. And I really yeah. like uh, um, Carrie Preston, who mm. played Arlene on True yeah. Blood. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was, I, I was glad to see her in another show, and I think that her character has an interesting kind of storyline because obviously there's a lot that she's hiding from mm -hmm. the other women at the nail salon like when she walked in but also like visually she's so different from them because mm -hmm. she walks in with like it looks like a freaking like you know ll bean bag mm -hmm. and like her little like country club just, like, just like her, her, her prom dress yeah uh, exactly yeah. exactly <laughs> like she's she's so like preppy it's good girl of, but like she works at this mm -hmm. crazy nail salon yeah, yeah. it's all a very like dirty feeling show in in certain senses and then very a the very sex loving is dirty feel. yeah, yeah. Yeah. A very loving yeah. feel. It's, it has a, a, its hands in a lot of different things, but a very specific subsect of this country. And this is this is like in headlines all the time. This happens kind of things. IRL all the time. Yeah. yeah, it's classic drugs. It's a classic drug store in the sense that you start off with good intentions, going down the yeah. wrong path, Breaking Bad. You know, yeah. he wanted to sell meth just so he could pay, you know, for his medical bills and help his family out, but he just sure. went too far. These ladies, they want a bigger nail salon. They want yeah. their own legitimate mm -hmm. business. Yeah. Going about it the wrong way, messing around with the wrong people. Yeah, always yeah. kind of ends up, mm -hmm. uh, you know, right. you, bite you. Right, but, you but, also, you but also, mm -hmm. like, messed around with the wrong people with the best of intention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know right, what I mean? Because sure. it was one of those things where it's like, they legitimately thought that this guy who they're basically doing runs for, like drug runs. Mm -hmm. uh, Uncle Daddy. It, it, they, they basically thought yeah. that he legitimately was going to pay them the money that they were yeah. owed. Like they, right. they, they were like, they were under no illusions that this was not shady business. Right. They knew that, but they're like, well, we got to do what we got to do. Yeah. And then like, it turns out that he's just as shady as his business is. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, and it's f so crazy how there's like a hierarchy to their business too. That like, you can't talk to this person. You have to go to this person because this is the person that brought you into the deal. Um, but the cool thing about the end of this episode, mm -hmm. I'm gonna spoil it obviously, yeah. but th there is, it sets up the rest of the season pretty damn well yeah. Yeah, the way it that it ends because it it gives you you think you know the plot but it really hits the plot in the yeah. last five seconds of the show. I yeah. will say I will say never trust people with too much gold in their teeth. Mm -hmm. And uh, my yeah, why mom, are the ladies all over that guy? Yeah, I don't know. They love him. I don't. Yeah, he's, he's I know when he comes in and they're like, "Who's Eminem's brother?" And I was like, like, "Oh, oh. man." <laughs> <laughs> brother, he, they're <laughs> all over him because he's handing out seventeen hundred dollar Louis Vuitton bags like that's they're true. nothing. Yeah, that's I will true. say, I, I went to go pick up my mom at the nail salon when, the last time I was in Pittsburgh, and I walked in. They're like, "How's life? How's comedy? What are you doing in LA?" And I was like, "Who are you people? Mm -hmm. I don't know any of you." My, <laughs> I swear to God, my mom has avoided therapy for years based solely on nail salons and I hope that <laughs> claws can do that for you out there <laughs> all right we are not here I am not here this week but and David and Sinead are running the show I hope they're doing a great job and that when you we cut are. back the studio is not <laughs> on fire <laughs> claws on TNT check it out it's on Sunday guys hello Josh McC oh Josh is gone Aww. no more McCuga it was nice to see him there for like where's McCuga 
We shot that last week, but be sure to check out Claws on TNT every Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For us out here in L.A., we see it at 6 o'clock, baby. It's nice being out here, especially for sports. Uh, but <laughs> not talking about sports, not a sports. We know the NBA Finals uh, Game 5 is on tonight. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm very excited to watch game, that. the last game of the series is what it is. <sighs> I hope it keeps it. going. I want to see it keep going. <laughs> All right, we're not talking about sports. We're not talking about sports. Uh, we're going to go to American Gods right now, folks. American Gods, uh, I know it's been one of my favorite new shows this season. Uh, this episode is called A Prayer for Mad Sweeney. This is the penultimate episode. Sometimes I like to do a little research here on Clarity Talk. Looked up the definition of penultimate. Pen, mm. I guess, coming from the word meaning almost. Yep. So we're at the almost finale. Um, I like to sound smart sometimes, too. That's why I do that. But, uh, Ben, um, we've never heard your opinion on American Gods, but... <laughs> Not just overall, but specifically this episode, A Prayer for Mad Sweeney. Obviously, spoiler alert is up. We get the backstory for Mad Sweeney himself, our favorite leprechaun, mm. uh, minus Lucky Charms guy. Yep. What did you think about this episode? This is a very focused episode, I thought. What did you think? Well, so I describe American Gods this way. I, I think when most people hear a pop song on the radio, for instance, if they hear one word in that song and a melody they like, they'll relate to it and they'll feel like they like that song. Taylor Swift, for instance. Yeah, I mean, anything. <laughs> if, if, let's say they don't know the song, but they know the melody from hearing it on the radio and they mm-hmm. know one line from the chorus and they right. hear it and they're like, I like that song and that song must be about that thing because that's the part I remember. Mm. American Gods to me is that show where you could be watching it's so beautiful if you catch one little linear narrative you're like oh yeah I like that so I like American Gods I have this good memory of it where in reality the show is so abstract and strange the lyrics to the song being the metaphor could be about who knows what and that's how I feel about this show half the time this last night's episode was like I mean, I think I knew what was going on, but was is Laura Moon uh, a, a reincarnated character? Is she a descendant mm. of this character? Did they just use the same actress to make it familiar? Mm. What was what were we even watching? They'd spent one of the eight episodes of their first season without two of their their main two leads for mm. an hour of television. Eighty five percent of me loves this show. Fifteen percent of me has no idea what to make of this show. And I do love the relationship between Laura Moon and Mad Sweeney. I think that's yeah. fantastic. Uh, I'm more and more into that. I am curious to know now. You know, what is actually Mad Sweeney's objective now? Because you know that he set up Laura Moon to die in the first place. Right. But the fact that he put the coin back inside her, semi-reluctantly it seemed like, but he felt like he had to for some reason. Why did he feel like he had to? I don't think it was just the kindness of his heart. So he's mm-hmm. working for someone. There was some reason that he needed to do that, a debt that he owed or something. Uh, that's how I feel about the show, though. It's just... It, Sometimes I love it. Sometimes I just don't. Know it's what to tough. Make it. I mean, I'll be fair. I it's I love it, but it's not always an easy show to watch. It, it takes its time. It paces yeah. itself so cautiously. It's only eight episodes, but every episode you just get a little. It feels like nothing happens, but actually there's a lot happening. Like you said, sometimes it's more in an abstract mm. form, so maybe it's hard uh, to connect with some of the characters. But I thought this episode was extremely insightful, and I thought it brought me closer to Mad Sweeney, and I just respect Emily Browning even more. I don't really know much about her. Every time I see her, I'm like, oh, there's that girl from Sucker Punch, yeah. which was not a great movie. Cool visuals, not a great movie. And I haven't really seen her in anything that's really... Even she was in um, that show uh, with uh, Tom, the movie with Tom Hardy when he was playing the twins. She, yeah, Legend. Yeah, Legend. And she was, again, okay. I think she's in Percy Jackson, the Olympians. Percy Jackson, yeah. She, sure. She's done some other work. So I think she's, she's been in a few things, but nothing that's really... Been I see like, her in Silver Lake. All Silver Lake. Okay, she's in Silver Lake. She's out she's here in L.A. Around, nearby. Some coffee. I interviewed Never her at the premiere. Her. She was a sweetheart. She was really she nice. Really right. nice. Yeah. But this, Tiny. I'm, I'm, I'm loving her in here. I thought she would, from her to go to Laura... Who's this like obviously corpse, mm. corpse walking with flies around her who just hates life and doesn't believe in anything except for this light that she sees, uh, you know, that, that, that is Ricky Whittle's character, Shadow Moon, um, to playing this sweet, innocent, well, in the beginning, yeah. uh, Irish woman, this Irish immigrant woman, and just to play her all through that arc. I thought she did a great job. I think yeah. it was more, I don't know, I, I watch stars on, online. So at the end, there's a little interview with Michael Green. Um, and, and some of the showrunners, they talk about the episode. And I think that they just cast her because they liked her so much. I don't mm. think she's supposed to be a reincarnation of this uh, uh, th- this was woman. But I thought she was so good. Uh, so I, I really like it. But I, I agree. I don't know what's going on. The, I have no idea what's going on. The makeup with her, uh, like, her scar torn open. And yeah. there's, like, the one boob. But it's, know, like, like, hanging yeah, off the, like, like uh, it's open skin yeah, is, like, so, so sick. They, like, <laughs> they're doing such a good job of the makeup in that show. Yeah. So, I, I'm a fan. I mean, I, I am a fan. And I'm going to finish watching mm-hmm. the show for sure. Uh, and I am, I'm very happy to see the show be successful. Ricky Whittle is a friend of mine from yeah. the days covering the hundred. Mm-hmm. And I'm so happy to see that the world is finally 
referencing him as other than that guy with the six pack from the hundred or that dude from Hollyoaks. He's like an actual star who's yeah. everywhere now, and it's it's nice to see. It's just weird because I mean, when you watch the opening credits, you'll see like Crispin Glover, you know, from Back to the Future. You'll see his name there. You don't even see him until the fifth episode. Yeah, like you have these leads that they just give you a little. We haven't even seen Chenoweth yet. Chenoweth, yeah, he's she playing shows up. Easter, I believe, or Spring or something like that. Oh my God, the cast is yet. outrageous. It's so in the costumes, yeah. the look. I know Sinead, you're off of it too, but you even admitted you just love. It's beautiful to look at. Gorgeous. Yeah, nice the show shot. is. The show is shot beautifully, but I just I couldn't. You're stick not connecting with it. with it. No, and I like it was good. Like mm -hmm. I I could watch the show if I want to, um, but it, right now it's just not up on my list of priorities. Mm. Sure, I understand, and folks. I know there's also a lot of other shows. I'm sure we'll see in the comments. I know it's Orphan Black premiered. Uh, Makuga is a huge Orphan Black fan, so he's yes. going to come back and he's going to review the heck out of some Orphan Black. Um, we're going to talk about that. And there's other shows, you know, we don't all watch everything, even though I try. But we're going to get to the highs and lows later. And folks, I did watch the Gotham season finale. And I know a lot of you have been bugging me about Gotham, Gotham this, Gotham that. I did watch Gotham. I'm going to mention Gotham in the highs and lows, so stay tuned to that. We have one more little video that we want to show you. Uh, Allison Kane, you know, every week has been doing her Performer of the Week segment. Um, you know, she's she's just been doing so good at that. She's from, you know, she's out in Atlanta. We wish we could have her on more, but she's in Atlanta with the Clatter.com team. So stay tuned. Check out Allison Keene's Performer of the Week. Hey, everybody. I'm Clatter.com TV editor Allison Keene here with our latest edition of TV Performer of the Week. I teased this out a few weeks ago that I'd be picking Ian McShane for American Gods, and this is before I've seen last night's episode, but like most performers of the week, this distinction covers his work all season. I think what's the most telling about McShane's success as Wednesday is that Neil Gaiman revealed in an interview with Collider.com recently that McShane is now that character for him in his head, which is basically the highest possible praise an author can give someone who is in one of their book adaptations. And of course, it's entirely deserved. McShane brings an impish delight to the character Wednesday. There's something lightly menacing about him, and if you haven't read the books, there's still a lot to figure out about his character. But some of his best moments are when he's playing a sort of befuddled old grandpa and and then quickly turns around as a very menacing and shrewd adversary. He challenges Shadow on faith and philosophy, and sometimes he just enjoys a nice beverage while talking about the old days. In last week's episode, A Murder of Gods, McShane had a lot of time spent with the character Vulcan, who was not in the books, so everybody was experiencing that storyline for the first time. And while a lot of it involved Wednesday calmly and sometimes wearily explaining things to Shadow, and by proxy the audience, about some of these gods and how their locations work, it also surprisingly included a badass sword-wielding scene, where McShane, I think, really captured the heart of what Wednesday's character is all about. He may look old, he may seem sardonic and worn out, but he will mess you up if you cross him. McShane is obviously a terrific veteran actor, and if you haven't watched Deadwood or know him from that, you should rectify that immediately. And then you should watch Rectify because it's also an amazing series. But the spirit and humor that brings that McShane brings to Mr. Wednesday is truly a standout performance, which is why he is my TV performer of the week. David Griffin, my Anglophile buddy, back to you. Thank you, Allison Keene, for that. Uh, Performer of the Week, as always, always making good picks. There's so many good actors out there. Like you just saw from our summer TV preview, there's always something to watch. Like TV is not over just because it's not September and October. You know, the CW shows and the ABC and CBS shows. I mean, there's so much TV to watch. So stay tuned. Keep watching. Stay tuned to American Gods, too. A great show. We're going to go into highs and lows. We're going to burn through these because I want to get to live Twitter questions. Please, you know, Sinead's over there scouring the web looking for questions. Hashtag Collider TV Talk. So be sure to send in your questions there. We're going to get right into it with our first high. Sinead, what is it? Luther season five is officially confirmed. Luther's coming back. Uh, Idris Elba's cop drama. Yeah. Uh, from the BBC. I, I, I love this show. This is where I first found Idris Elba. Well, no, no, it's not true. The Wire. The Wire is where I first saw it. But then Stringer after Bell. The Wire, it was, it was Luther. And he's a busy man. Like Benedict Cumberbatch uh, and all those guys, they still find time to make TV. Benedict comes back and he does Sherlock Holmes. Idris Elba, he doesn't need the money. He's doing okay in movies. He's like, you know what? I love Luther. I love this character. I want to come back and do a couple more episodes. So Dude, four more episodes. I mean, I think Idris is an incredible actor, and yeah. he's, he's peaking right now. So mm -hmm. uh, this is a good decision for him. I think it's a well-loved show. It's not a show that I've watched. I've only watched little bits and pieces of the show just to see what it's about. But uh, it's something I'm eventually definitely going to catch up on as I do love Idris. Thumbs up on Idris Elba. Uh, Luther coming back. Better Call Saul. Another great episode. I think we have two more episodes left. I mean... I don't want to spoil too much, but, man, there's some stuff with, with Nacho in there that is just crazy. Um, I, I love his character. Um, it's just every – it's such a quiet show. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of quiet moments. They're not afraid of silence uh, when they're in a scene, but they're just, it's just done so well. The show has really hit its stride this mm -hmm. season. Um, it doesn't 
I always say this about this compared to Breaking Bad. It, it doesn't obviously have a Brian Cranston. I think that right. I do think that Bob Odenkirk is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I love the guy. He, he's so good in this. Mm -hmm. um, but it, you, a character like the Brian Cranston character is such a unique thing that really comes along. But this mm -hmm. is so close, and I feel like it's hitting its stride now in the same way that Breaking Bad was really hitting its stride at the second half of its first season, mm -hmm. um, where you're just like, I am sucked in. This is my favorite show to watch every week. It's the only show that comes on television right now, other than when Riverdale was on, where I'm just like, I have to watch this. I cannot <laughs> wait. I can't leave this a week. I have to watch it the night it's out. We are going to talk quickly about Fear the Walking Dead. <laughs> Ben, you're one, you and Makuga are the only two people I know that actually watch the show. So what What's I was going just on saying about Dead? that show that I uh, can wait to watch, <laughs> that's kind of how it is with this show. I loved the beginning of this ep this season. Are they Last off week, the boat yet? Are they still on the boat? They're off the boat. They're off the boat. Fear the Walking Dead, <laughs> such a unique, different show than Walking Dead was. Because mm -hmm. with this one, there was a budget and there was a brand name associated. So they were like, all right, we can go hire Cliff Curtis and Kim Dickens and Alicia mm -hmm. Devon Carey. All these actors that had huge followings and enormous numbers of movie credits for the mm -hmm. most part. And what they're doing now is they're cleaning house a little bit. Is this a spoiler section? Can I say anything or no? You're going to spoil it up. It's up. It's up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. A major character, I'll just say, died at the beginning of the season to kick okay. the season off. And it was a good decision because they needed a clean house because mm -hmm. season two was very up and down. It was too long, and uh, it really faltered a little bit. I like season one a lot more. This third season, though, has some good things going for it, mm -hmm. and they're doing a great job of featuring both Coleman Domingo and Alicia Debdom Carey as really major characters now, as they were probably the two strongest characters other than Frank Delane's character, so that's a great decision. Uh, I'm gonna keep watching it. I'm 50 50. So you're about a, you're about a medium there. Like a little, I would give it 51% yeah. because it's mm -hmm. much better than season two was, but I'm not all the way in. Okay. Uh, looking at Game of Thrones season seven, some more news. Little bits of news keep coming and coming. We're gonna get the longest episodes that we have ever seen. So yes, this is only seven episodes this season, but they are much longer. The penultimate episode is going to be, I believe, like around 71 minutes. And the finale is going to be 81 minutes long. The longest episode we've ever had of Game of Thrones was last season's finale at 68 minutes. So we're still getting plenty of content for me. This is thumbs up. This is yeah, good for you too, Ben. Thumbs up. I, I know you, you love Game of Thrones. You like Game of Thrones. <laughs> Sinead, what do you think? Oh, you don't watch Game of Thrones. I'm sorry. You don't watch Game of Thrones. An episode of Game of Thrones. He doesn't watch Game of Thrones. What? Keep reminding the internet. Sorry about that. I'm sorry. Every I'm sorry. single Monday, it happens <laughs> to come up. I've never seen it, and I get attacked online. <laughs> I will watch it. It's just too late right now to try to catch up at this moment. Uh, another show I'm watching right now is Fargo, which I'm going to give a huge thumbs up to. It's just... For me, one of my favorite shows, uh, Ben, I know you said we were talking here earlier, you've got to uh, interview uh, some of the cast, people behind the scenes yeah, uh, for that. Yeah, I've done but a lot of coverage on this show. It's, it's so well done. You can start anywhere. I mean, I would recommend starting at the beginning so you get the entire story, but it's kind of like an anthology, even though there are elements that connect them, but they are their own separate stories. You get 10 episodes a season. It's one of my favorite shows. You can catch up on Hulu right now for seasons one through two. So definitely big thumbs up for me for Fargo. I think this show and The Americans are the unsung best shows on mm -hmm. television for most people. They're that second tier that I think the real diehards will tell you this is the best show on TV. Right, but it's like they have good viewership, but not. it's not like up yeah. where like Game of Thrones and Walking Dead and those kind of shows are, yeah. but it's still definitely must watch. Really quick, when mm -hmm. I was uh, I, when I was in, I interviewed Kristen Dunst over the weekend, um, and when I was talking to her, I asked her what's one character she would love to revisit again, like to see what they're up to in 2017, if she could pick any character from all of her repertoire. And she said Peggy and Fargo. Yeah, mm. she was great. I mean, she was, I, I, I don't, I like Kirsten Dunst, but that was one of the best things I've ever seen her do was in season mm -hmm. two of Fargo. She was a crazy, <laughs> crazy lady, but she played that so perfectly. Let's go into a couple new trailers. Uh, yeah. first, high, uh, first high and low, new trailer for Stephen King's The Mist. We talked about it a little out. bit earlier. Yeah, yeah that's one I, of yeah. your picks, huh? I'm definitely high. Yeah, I think it looks great. I think the trailer looks fantastic. Yeah, it looks really cool. It looks creepy. Uh, then we're going to go new trailer for Gypsy, starring Naomi Watts. This is a new Netflix series that starts up June 30th. It's coming mm -hmm. out really soon. They really didn't pull their punches on making this uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, the TV show. I mean, the yeah. music is identical. It's just like the, the tone of that trailer, listening to one of you guys was watching yeah. or setting up. Yeah. And I was like, this just feels like I'm listening to the trailer for Fifty Shades. Um, but I love the cast, mm -hmm. Naomi Watts. I don't know why it is, because it's not like Naomi Watts is the biggest star in the world, but for some reason, seeing her on a Netflix television show makes me feel like, wow, this is really just, yeah. like, this is really taken over. It's feature films on a streaming platform mm -hmm. that, like, they can get anyone. And yeah. she's not that big. It's not like getting DiCaprio, but I mean, Brad Pitt was just in something. I don't know, but it's a TV show. So it stands out. It looks mm -hmm. great. I'm excited to watch this. I'm excited that she's working. She's on um, uh, <laughs> Twin Peaks right now, too, which is cool to see. So I'm glad Naomi Watts are on TV more. Thumbs up for me. 24 Legacy canceled. Now, that's not really the issue that I wanted to talk about. It's more that they're still thinking of doing another reboot. That's what I kind of want to do a thumbs you know, up or down. I think if you have a popular franchise like that, 
and it wasn't received well the second time they they, they reiterated it, mm-hmm. but it was still it was still solid. It followed the 24 formula, mm-hmm. so I don't know how much they can veer from that. For me, I'm going to do a thumbs down if they're thinking about doing more. I think they should put it away, maybe bring it back five, six years from now, but for now, just, just put it away. I don't think people want to see it. I mean, I don't get it. I think they're trying so hard to hold on to it, and I mean, I understand that. Like, 24 mm-hmm. was a huge show, but we talked about this. My biggest issue was with that show was the storyline. It was like we were. Get, it was the same stuff that we see on the news every single day, but a very to me, not authentic version of it. Mm-hmm. And so maybe they wanted to like do it again with a completely different storyline and take the terrorism stuff out or right. whatever. But I just don't know. I, why Why would that even be something that they would announce? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I think that we need to wait at least, at least like five years. I totally agree. I, I think though one thing to keep in mind is that the people that are making these decisions ultimately, the ones that actually sign the contract, they're usually looking at the bottom line. And when mm-hmm. that bottom line exists, you got to think about like Fear the Walking Dead is a good example. If they said, okay, let's say this pulls 20% of the viewership that Walking Dead mm-hmm. pulls. In the land of new television shows, that's still a that's massive good. hit. Yep. So when they're like 24 did these numbers and the Corey Hawkins version was down here, if this new relaunch can even get here, mm-hmm. it's still a hit for mm-hmm. us. So it's still worth it because coming up with new content in the digital space, right. which it dominates, is so hard to do. Right. But I agree with you guys. I think from a credibility standpoint, drop it for five years. Yeah, that's because I'm sorry. I, I started reading the highs and lows. Now oh, I don't mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm losing track of what's going on. I don't mind. Um, Sinead, can you read the next one? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Stranger Things season two will feature more monster goodness. So they did say, I'm doing a quick, we've got to kind of fly through here. Uh, quick thumbs up for me. They said they're going to have more monsters this time. The monsters were in the background uh, for season one. They want to feature them more prominently. So for me, that's a big the spider looking monster looks sick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> more Stranger Things is always good. New duck. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sinead. <laughs> <laughs> taking over the show, people. I'm taking over. New DuckTales character picks. Yes, I love DuckTales. So. DuckTales, weirdly enough, was not something I watched growing up. I know people yes, love it. Mm-hmm. It's in that wheelhouse of all those things. And, you know, what? Sure, watch it with your kids. If you loved it, it's probably a good thing. Poldark, yeah. season three premiere. Yeah, Poldark, season three did premiere. I'm very excited about that. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk about it because I know in the States it hasn't premiered yet. So when it comes over here, Wherever they decide to show it, probably PBS mm-hmm. was what they usually do. David didn't do. fly all the way to I didn't England fly to the UK. I, t- I to thought I was. My, my friend said he had a full house, so he couldn't put me up. So I'm sorry, I didn't make it to the UK. Uh, we will get back to Poldark uh, when it comes to the States. So, Sinead, let's skip down to P, or let's go down to the Gotham. Yep, so the Gotham season three finale. So I've only watched three or four Gotham episodes ever. That's I it. was in the same boat. I watched, like, I think, the first three in season one. But everybody's like, you got to check out the finale. So spoiler alert. Can we put a spoiler alert up there? Cody, thank you so much. You're wonderful. Um, spoiler alert real quick. Uh, so Bruce kind of becoming Batman at the end. That's what I read on Twitter. He's fighting some crime, I guess. I mean, he doesn't have the suit or anything. He's kind of had the Daredevil look a little bit, just like all in black mm. with, a, with a mask on. And he was just, he was fighting crime. Yeah, Roxy Stryer, uh, who's a big fan of the Gotham mm-hmm. universe, was telling me all about it. She said there were some major character deaths. She told me that, there, that Bruce shows up as, uh, yeah, in the black suit. Rachel Ghoul's floating around. He's around there, which is cool. We saw Rachel and Arrow, and now he's Fish Mooney he, dies apparently. Yeah, so yeah, I didn't see her at all in the. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, I'm, I, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, but I was like, oh, it wasn't a bad finale. So I checked out the Gotham season three finale. So maybe I'll check out the premiere for season four when it comes out or five. Four, I think. Four. We're on four. We're still on four. Okay. CW. Oh, sorry, Shania. Go to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> CW fall premiere dates. And then last is the Tony Awards. I didn't watch the Tony Awards. Anybody watch the Tony Awards? Okay, we'll skip that one. Uh, we'll talk about the CW premiere dates. So they have moved some <laughs> things around. Uh, Wednesdays now. Riverdale is going to be on Wednesdays now. Yeah. And Arrow is on Thursdays. Yep. I don't know how I feel. It's kind of either way for me. But I was like, oh, that's interesting. CW for me has become the network that when I was in my teens and early twenties, I was like, "This is this is kid stuff. I'm not gonna watch this." And then I like started watching like secretly as a guilty pleasure, and now I'm just like all in. I love mm-hmm. Riverdale. I watch The Hundred. Like I said, Valor mm-hmm. with Christine. I'm gonna watch that. I'm I'm really into this network. I think they're doing better and better stuff. Jane the Virgin, the first Golden Globe nomination uh, for a CW show. I, they're just killing it right now. Yeah, they're doing better are. stuff. I have six hours of my life back that those shows are off the air right now I for know. the break. I really needed a break. I like them, but it's just it's too much. That it's, was, it's a, a lot. It was a lot. It's a lot of the CW. All right, Sinead, let's go into live Twitter questions. We've got a few minutes left here. I want to get to the hear what the people have to say. All right. About my so, hosting. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Okay, Brian Fernandez says, is there a show that everyone has been telling you to check out for some time, but yet you don't want to? Is there? Um, for me, I watched the first episode of The Leftovers a year ago, Ooh. and I loved it, and I haven't watched it. It's one of those things, it's like you got to just find time in your mm-hmm. life for things. 
it's just for some reason because I watched the first one and I didn't get to go all the way through it, mm -hmm. I'm like reluctant to start it over because I can't remember the first episode well enough. Uh, that's for me, but I would love to watch it. It's for me, it's probably it's the Americans. I'm on season two, but it's just a good show. Been so slow for me to get to. I, I like it, I do, but I watched like one episode, two here. I think I'm almost done with season two, but I haven't had that that drive where it kicks in. You start binging like yeah. crazy, yeah. so that's one of them. Do you, you know what you mine is? Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of Thrones. Come on, Sinead. I will. You guys, there's there's literally no point in watching it for the hundredth time because at this point, you guys talk about it here. Everyone talks about it on the internet, and I have no idea what's going on, so nothing gets spoiled for me. If I try watching it now, I'm going to start getting to know character names and plot lines and everything, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to hear people are dying, and this is happening, and then it's going to ruin it. So once it's all over, I will go into my cave, and I will watch Game of Thrones. Promise. Sounds good. Handmaid's Tale is the other one for me. That's I just haven't watched oh, yeah, it I yet. Have and I, I hear, yeah. I hear it's I'm, I'm still watching. That's it's intense. Yeah, it's intense. Um, all right. So Amy Awesome says, "What new summer TV show do you think won't live up to all the hype?" Ooh. Hmm. You what know, are, my, my fear. Okay, I'll see, uh, Amy. My fear is Preacher won't be as good as I think it's going to be. I think Preacher's going to be fantastic. Did you watch season one? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was a little rocky. Yeah. It was a little rocky. It was a little rocky. I mean, so, the finale was good. Yeah, I think this is either going to just jumpstart it, it's going to be the one of the better shows this summer, hmm. or it's just going to fall flat. Um, I think it's going to be kind of, I know I don't like to be that uh, hyperbolic, but I feel like it's going to be kind of an either or yeah. with that. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's a show that I'm really expecting to flop this summer, uh, at least not one that's really on my radar mm -hmm. as far. You know, I think we, like shows that have flopped or shows that are a little further down the line um, that haven't actually been announced, but not for the summer. I don't, I don't think I have a strong okay. pick for that. With the fall stuff, they usually an announce it pretty soon. What's not going to continue? And the right? fall is a little bit easier because you can watch some of those trailers. Like, hey, I'm not trying to pick on ABC, but that show Deception that's coming yeah. out, it's about a magician that solves crimes. Yeah. I mean, hey, <laughs> it could be the breakout hit, and I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll eat my hat. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I just don't see that going through. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, at TV Fan 85 says, is Riverdale worth binging? Oh, yes. I love Riverdale. That show, not even from like an Archie Comics point of view, but I, I and I loved Archie growing up, but like the point is, if you love The O.C., which is one of my classic favorite shows ever, mm -hmm. I'm such a big fan of The O.C., and you love, like, like people call it Teen Peaks. It's kind of what it is. Teen Peaks, I like that, yeah. It's just, like, lovable and fun mm -hmm. and, like, but, like, has good, like, solid performances. The whole cast of parents, it's all, like, stars of 80s and 90s yes, television. totally. That show is the best. Mm -hmm. It show is so good. It's my mm -hmm. favorite show on television. And you got to interview Jason Blossom, I saw on your social yeah, media he, recently. Uh, he's he a watches the show. He watches the show, yeah. and, yeah. yeah, he was on our show, and mm -hmm. uh, that, that, guy's, that guy's the man. That whole cast, you know, I knew Cole Sprouse when I was younger, mm -hmm. and he's a sweet kid. That, I, I'm a big fan of the cast. I think they're doing a great job with that show. Nate's got to interview uh, some of the cast as well. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I've, I freaking love Riverdale. Um, I hung out with uh, Cheryl Blossom. Awesome. Madeline. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maddie. Um, mm -hmm. But, I mean, everyone in that show to me is just, like, they're so they're so different. It's like not the way you see young people acting right now. And it's the writing is incredible, and I, I just feel like it's so good. And I was a huge Gossip Girl fan, too, and I, I don't know. It's just, it's so good. It's entertaining, which, which is why I feel like, yes, you can binge it, and you can really binge it, because you'll be so entertained that you'll want to keep watching it. So if you haven't seen it, I think it's a good summer binge, It comes back sure. in October. It's so soon. It like, just mm -hmm. ended. I'm so excited. Yeah, oh, it's man. awesome. Yeah, I just don't get a lot of, just not a lot of time off in the CW show. It's just, they keep no, coming. The but they're good. They are good. They keep yeah. coming, though. Yeah. That's the best. That's the best one. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see here. Jonathan Peck says, if you could mm -hmm. be on a deserted island with one TV character for the rest of your life, who would it be? What's up, Jonathan Peck? I know Jonathan Peck. Thanks for having me in. One TV <laughs> character. Uh, Boy, probably be a lady. On a desert <laughs> island? Like, <laughs> is this like a who you want to have coffee with? Or is uh, it yeah, like, yeah, on a deserted island. You have to be stuck with one person. Who would you want there on a deserted island? That's a really tough See, I think about this a little bit practically in the sense that, you know, you want to have a little bit of a legacy for yourself. So you have a lady with you. Mm. Mm. You least you know, have a son or a daughter, and then they can, you know, have some kids and somebody to till the land, right. you know, r run the farm. I mean, like, are there wild animals yeah, on Yeah, you know, probably island? some animals. Yeah, like, do you need point. protection? Like, do, like do, do we, are we going to die soon? Right. I mean, do we need, like, a, a superhero? Can we build a raft? Is that a possibility, building right. a raft? Yeah, it's a hard question to answer. I kind of want to just say, like, <laughs> Melissa Benoist slash Supergirl, because, like, well, A, she's She could fly you away from the island. Gorgeous That's and amazing, mm -hmm. but yes, also she could fly us away from the <laughs> island. <laughs> yeah. If it was just going to be, like, the person, the character that I would just, like, want to hang out with, mm -hmm. though I don't know if hanging out with him for this long would be great, would be Coach T from Friday Night Lights because Kyle Chandler's the man. Oh, but, yeah. but like, I don't know if I'd want to be on an island with him Coach. forever. Yeah. Coach. Yeah. Coach. At a certain point, I'd just be like, all right, I've heard the wisdom. You've mm -hmm. you've no new life experiences because we're on an island together. I've heard all your stories. Stop it. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'd probably want one of the handymen, like you know, maybe like Tim the Tool Man or something like yeah, that. Somebody sure. could like build some so we can make maybe make a raft and get out, get off that island. All right, Sinead, what's next? <laughs> uh, Joe Geiger Jr. says, what show wasted its gimmick? I have to say forever. I don't know what that show is. Is that the one with uh, with Yoan Grunfeld? I the one where he's oh, right yeah. like a ghost you know, or whatever. I can think of a show. Remember the, the show called The Event? Oh yeah. And it was all. It was after Lost was big and Lost, and Lost might have been done or about mm. to finish. And they were like, we gotta have this next. We need. We, they actually called it The Event. Mm. And like their hype after the it episode is. ended, this plane disappeared. Yeah. And they're like, find out next week where the plane went. Like it had nothing to do with the characters. All of the drama was built off of whatever the event was. And I'm like, what made Lost so good was not the. I mean, it was crazy. Yeah. But it's about the characters. You love the characters. That's why Lost was so good. And they kind of forgot that. So I think for me, The Event, which I think was canceled pretty quickly. Mm. Sinead? I have no, no. idea. No yeah. idea what wasted its gimmick. I think, uh, well, I think that I think powerless. Unfortunately, it yeah. didn't really oh, waste yeah, it. Oh yeah, that's a good one. It didn't waste it, but like the fact that it's gone, it was mm-hmm. a cool premise, mm-hmm. and I, it would have been nice to see. Under the Dome was another one that's like a pretty fun. Yeah, that was actually. I read that I book. Mean, yeah, I, I watched Under the Dome <laughs> yeah. for a little bit. Um, I didn't. I didn't hate it. It was just kind of corny. Yeah. But like wasting it, that's a hard word. It's hard because it's not. It's memory, if, if it really truly wasted it, and it's not in the last like three years, none of us remember it anyway because it was a pilot that didn't get made. Or right. Like, right. True. You know. Yep. Um, Derek Spicer says, do y'all really hate The Ranch new season next week or Makuga and D. Griff just giving it and me a hard time? I never I never saw it. I never watched it. I've yeah. never that, seen an episode Makuga. of The Ranch. Yeah. I think Josh did watch it and he was not a fan. Um, it is still a comeback, right? Mm-hmm. And people are pretty divided on it. Um, what I've heard about it from most people is that it was more on the bad side of the scale, um, but not not bad in terms of like, um, what's the word I'm looking? Not bad in terms of like you can't watch it. It's just right. not for everybody. Like it's corny and over the top, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, it's not it's not something that's ever really appealed to me. I never watched it. Isn't Wil- Wilmer Valderrama's in that show? Yeah. No. 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 no, no that's, uh, that's the ranch is uh, yeah, and um, the guy who does all the Dodge Ram commercials. Oh, okay. What's yeah. His name. <laughs> Never mind. Sam Elliott. I'm Sam Elliott. Yeah, I think oh. Sam Elliott's in that show. I believe. I Sam just Elliott, yeah. you should. Speaking of Sam Elliott, go see the hero when that's out. Mm-hmm. That's the, it's basically the wrestler meets an old Hollywood western star. And the, I just saw the premiere for this last oh. week, and he stars in it. He's probably gonna get an Oscar nom if it goes wide enough. Mm-hmm. That movie's great, and he's fantastic in it. So Sam Elliott, that's wow. my recommendation there. All right, Steve, that is all the time that we have for live Twitter questions. <clears throat> Thank you for sending those in. Please keep sending those questions in. Hashtag Clatter TV Talk. But it is now time, ladies and gentlemen, for that time. <laughs> Every other, Yeah, I like that. That was a good save. I saved it right there. Um, I'm going to do my best Josh McCuga impression. Woo, I'm, I'm, probably, I'm probably going to scare Ben off if I never want to come back. So, <laughs> Ben, it is now time for your pick of the week. Yeah. Yay. 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 Yeah, thanks. All right. Uh, Pick of the week. I alluded to it with Coach T. Friday Night Lights. It's not my favorite show of all time. It's in my top five, I would say. But there is no show ever in the history of the universe that I've gotten so much mileage out of rewatchability, quotes, the the pilot. It's the single best TV pilot ever made. Uh, Mm -hmm. If the TV pilot will still give me, like, goosebumps and get me teary-eyed every time, this show is so incredible. Uh, the explosions in the sky, music, everything about it. In the second episode, when he goes to see Jason Street and he's in the hospital bed and he's like, I'm sorry I let you down, coach. And he's like, son, you didn't let me down. You were make guys like me want to coach. And he's like, you are a good man. I get, oh, God, it gets me every time. That show is unbelievable. Tim Riggins is like a fairy tale character. Uh, it's the best marriage ever on TV. I would watch this show with anyone ever like yes i just it's the best show it's the best show if my current girlfriend didn't love this show so much if she wasn't already the biggest fan of it i would be like we need to watch it from the beginning right now but she loves it as much as i do so we aren't gonna binge the whole thing that was the requirement yeah i didn't even check but like the fact that she loves it it's almost disappointing because we don't get to watch it together for the first time but you know so Pick of the week, Friday Night Lights, folks. That is a great show. Watch, a great show. watch Friday Night Lights. I think you can get it on Netflix right now. You can stream that. So get get to streaming. Get to streaming, people. So that was the show today. Clara TV Talk. We did it. We, we made it. it. Uh, we do have to do outros, of course. So don't forget the lovely people that are here. Sinead, where can the people find you? I'm online at Sinead DeFries and at that's so Sinead.com. You guys can check out my blog, that's so Sinead.blog. And that's it. Ben, where can people find you? Uh, You guys can find me at Ben Bateman Media on like Twitter or Instagram or the socials. You can find me every single Wednesday live at 1230 doing action movie anatomy, covering one of the greatest action films of all time every single week, streaming live. And uh, I compete on the schmo down here. Uh, I'm like Bruce Banner now, but my personality there is like the Hulk. And our (laughs) team's called Team Action. You'll like us. I wear sunglasses. It's great. 
Team Action, ladies and gentlemen. I'm David Griffin. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at GriffinDE. Next week, uh, I think we'll be back to, yeah, basics. And Emma Fife will be back. Josh McCook will be back in town. You know, I'll be in my proper place. You know, but I hope I did a good job for you. Hope you enjoyed it today. Uh, yeah, what does Makuga usually say? He says, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us. And don't forget, I'm going to change it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Put down that remote and pick up some books. Actually, I actually have a couple books right here. I also have Noah Hawley's Before the Fall and Neil deGrasse Tyson, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. Read, people. It's good for you. I'm just kidding. Pick, pick up that remote. And last hey thing guys, I wanted to add is if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.